Hello, today we, we're going to start with lesson three. Uh, we are going to continue with the last course layer. In particular, we have moved from the data plane to the control plane. So the main goal of this lesson is to understand the principle behind the network control plane. So our idea is to rethink on the difference between the forwarding and the routing functionalities to understand the principle behind the traditional routing algorithms. As we will see there are two types depending on the, on the scope, on the distribution or the centralization of the information, IP traditional and uh, SDN. And then we will pass to know which type of SDN controllers we can work with. And finally, we are going to learn a couple of protocols that uh, can help IP uh, in different ways. The first one is the ICMP protocol. This is a protocol for uh, sending uh, messages of control to the different elements in the network. So for example, when the TTL expires, the router will send a, a packet to the source host that uh, sent the, the, the original packet to inform the packet has been discarded or dropped. Uh, another important operation is, uh, for example, to do a ping. When we make a ping, uh, there are a couple of ICMP messages, one for, for sending the, the, the request and the other one for the reply. Another important protocol is uh, SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol. This protocol is used for uh, having a knowledge of the elements that compose the network. There is a centralized element that gathers information from the other elements in the network in the sense that, for example, we want to know <coughs> which is the state of the, the, the router, the link, the link load. So in a similar way than the SDN controller does for, for an SDN network uh, and having the information for the rest of the elements in the network. Uh, so as a summary, we have several protocols for routing, OSPF, and uh, VGP. OSPF is used for routing inside an ISP network, while VGP is used for connecting different uh, ISPs. So the main protocol in SDN is called OpenFlow, and uh, it, it is the, the protocol used for sending the information from one host to one switch and from one switch to another or from the switches to the SDN controller. Open the light, ONOS are different types of SDN controllers that we are going to see in this, uh, in this lecture. And finally, we have the two protocols I have already mentioned, ICMP, for uh, control messages and SNMP for network management. So then we are going to introduce the concept of routing protocols. And uh, finally, we are going to understand which are the principles behind the link state protocols and distance vector protocols. So if you remember, there are two network layer functions. The first one is called forwarding. The forwarding is described as follow. So consider I'm a router and I have the possibility of sending an incoming pocket from this port to any of these two uh, nodes. So the forwarding functionality is implemented in the data plane of the node. And it is as follows. I check the destination IP of the incoming packet. I compare with my 
routing table. So I will select an entry in the routing table in order to decide which is the output to be used for forwarding the packet. But the content of the routing table must be filled up by means of the output of a routing protocol. So since forwarding is a local functionality on a particular node, there is a global routing uh, information that must be exchanged among the routers to fill up all the routing tables in the network. So this routing table, so this, this routing functionality is implemented in the control plane that we already know that both planes are implemented inside a router in the traditional IP networks, but they are separated in SDN. The data plane is implemented in the switches and the control plane is implemented in the SDN controller. So now we are going to recall both functionalities. The first one is the one for traditional IP routing or IP networks. So within the same router, we have both planes, the control plane and the data plane. The data plane is the process of receiving an incoming packet, checking the destination IP, comparing with the information from the uh, routing table, and then forward the packet. This is the, the data plane functionality. On the other hand, the control plane is a process that is uh, configured on each router in an IP network. So the routers are exchanging information about the network topology and they decide which is the best path for uh, each of an incoming packet. So it is a distributed and decentralized task that is implemented on all the routers in the network. On the other hand, if we pass to SDN, we can clearly see the difference between both planes. The data plane is implemented in the switches or nodes, and the control plane is implemented on a remote controller. So this logically centralized on single point of failure device is in charge of installing the rules on the, SCA, on the SDN switches. So in this case, both planes are separated. Now we are going to pass to uh, understand and learn the routing protocols. The main goal is to assess which is the best path to be followed by packets from a source to a destination. So a path is a sequence of routers. If you remember, when we were uh, seeing the trace root command, this is, for example, the path that is followed by a packet that is sent from A to B. The path is this one. And there is one hop in the path. So how to assess the path, how to give importance of, to a particular path? Okay, good could mean least cost. So the, the, the optimization must be followed to use the least cost path in this case. If we assume there is one, uh, one volume for the cost to A to X and one volume of cost the link cost in both links is equal to one, so the cost from A to B is two, okay? So we have to define the goodness of the, of the path, the number of hops, the fastest path, the least congested path, so we have to decide it. So as you can see, there is a, um, a, a very important challenge here in the routing. So network, Researchers are continuously working on routing, so it's a 
top 10 networking challenge because it's very important to adapt to the traffic, to adapt to, to new features in the network. For example, the migration from IP to, to SDN that we mentioned previously. So it's important to work and propose new algorithms in this way. How can we uh, represent a network to work with routing protocols? So a network is represented by a graph G which is composed by a set of nodes and connected by a set of links, N and E. So N is the set of routers, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. And E is the set of links, all of them. So for example, this link, U, V, U, V is this link. And it has a cost of two. This other link, WY, is this link, and the cost is one. So this is the representation we're going to use when talking about routing protocols. How to represent the cost? So the cost for, for example, in this case, from uh, for the link ux ux is equal to one so we represent the cost of a couple of nodes in this way c x x prime or ux is the the value of the link cost and the cost of the path is is the summary of all the costs of all the links in the path but the main question is which is the least cost path between, for example, a node, U, and another node, Z? So do you have the answer? Well, if you have the answer, maybe you have tried with all the possible combinations, six, 17 combinations, sorry. Um, that, but we can rely on a routing algorithm, routing protocol to uh, quickly assess this path and these values. So now we are going to, to pass to explain this kind of algorithms. First of all, we have to think on different categories. So uh, the first question is, do we have global information or decentralized, which is the same as distributed information? So if we have a global information, all the routers in the network have the, the, a global view of the whole topology. So it's a kind of snapshot of the topology where each router knows the graph, the whole graph, both considering the nodes and the links and also the costs. So this type of algorithms are called link state because each router knows which is the state of its link. On the other hand, we have a decentralized or distributed solution where each router only knows the information from its neighbors, only the adjacent nodes, know the whole network. So it's a an iterative process of computation to exchange information with the neighbors. So in this case, the algorithms are called distance vector algorithms. This is a possible classification. Another possible classification is static or dynamic traffic. Static or dynamic uh, routing. Static routing means that the paths are not commonly changed uh, over time. So there is the same routing configuration uh, through the time. Otherwise, we have dynamic routing where there are some failures in the network links or some links that are off because of some problems or there is an increase or decrease in the traffic, so we have to route the traffic. So uh, the paths must be changed in a, in a common way. So uh, let's start with the link state protocols that uh, I mentioned before. Uh, we have a global view of the network. The main routing algorithm belonging to the link states uh, classification is the Dijkstra algorithm. So 
we have the, the full snapshot of the topology. We know the cost of each link. We know the shape of the network. How to know all this information by means of link state broadcast messages. So all the nodes in the network have the same information. And each node will compute the Dijkstra algorithm in order to know which is the shortest path between itself and the rest of the nodes in the network. So the, the result of this algorithm will give us the information for the forwarding table of each node. And an, another important thing is that since it is an iterative process, after k iterations, we know the path with the minimum cost to k destinations. So we're going to, to introduce it later. Uh, the notation we are going to, to use. So we have seen the cost from node, the cost for, for link connecting node X to node Y. This cost, this is called cost from X to Y. Okay. Imagine there is another W node that is not connected to X. So the cost from X to W is equal to infinite. Big D is the current distance from node X in the sense that node X is the one we are assessing the forwarding table for. So D, V is the distance from X to V that we know at, at this moment. T is the predecessor node in the path from a X node to V node. And then it's an incremental set of nodes that will start and prime, sorry, with, will start with an empty set and then we will introduce X as the target node. Now I'm going to explain the Dijkstra algorithm. This is our first step of initialization from line two to line six. And in this case, we are going to uh, fit the algorithm in, in a particular way. So first of all, n prime is set to u, which is the source node or the node we want to assess the, the, the routing for. And for the rest of the node, for example, if u is the source node and we have v, w, and x, and all of them are adjacent to you, for example, if these three nodes are adjacent to you, we can establish the specific distance. Cost, for example, in this case, one, one, and one. So the distance from u to v will be one, the distance to w is one, and the distance to x is also one, okay? If there are some other nodes, like for example, y, that is not adjacent to u, in this initialization, the distance to y is equal to infinite. Okay, so this is the first step, the first step for initialization. Then, once we finish with this uh, first line, we have a loop. This loop from line 9 to 15. So the idea is to check all the remaining nodes in the network, not included in N, and we will pick the one with the uh, minimum cost to U in terms of distance. So then we have to, for example, if W 
is this one. We have to update the information by using this new uh, distance. So let's see an example. I think it would be better to, to see an example instead of uh, playing with the, with the formula. Here we want to uh, know which is the minimum cost path, the least cost path from U to the rest of the nodes. Okay, so the first step, as I previously mentioned, is to put step zero, the set n prime is U, and now we have to check in the initialization the neighbor. Uh, nodes to you. So you have three neighbors, X, W, and V. Okay? And while Y and Z are not adjacent, so the idea is to okay, the cost from U to X is 5, so cost 5 predecessor u, the cost from u to w is 3, 3, uh, predecessor u, the cost from u to v is 7, 7 u, and for y and z, there is an direct link, so we put infinite, infinite. There is not a direct link from u to y and to z. So there's this first uh, step or iteration finishes with uh, the selection of the node with the minimum distance. In this case, w is the node with minimum distance, so we pass to the next iteration by passing w to n prime. So we have u, w, and then we have to repeat the process. The process is repeated in this way. Now we know that the minimum distance from u to the, the other node included in n prime is 3. So we have these two nodes as finished, let's say. Then we have to repeat the process. So for each of the rest of the columns, V, X, Y, and Z, we have to assess the, the same information, the same values, the minimum distance. So let's start with V. Is there any path from U to V that is shorter or uh, smaller? minimum compared to the one we have. We have, in this case, we have uh, seven. Is there any other possibility to go from mu to v with a smaller cost? Yes, by means of w, we can go with a cost of six. And the predecessor now is W. Okay. Well, let's continue. Now, uh, is there any path that is shorter than the one we have from U to X? I mean, uh, to have a smaller value rather than 5. So if we use W, which is the only node we can play with, we have this option, but 3 plus 4 are 7, which is bigger than 5. So we don't have this opportunity in this case. So finally, we remain the same value, 5 U. What about Y? Is there any option to go from U to Y by means of W, which is smaller than infinite? 
yes, this opportunity. In this case, we have 3 plus 8, it is 11, the predecessor W. But unfortunately for Z, there is no option to go from U to Z by relying on W. So we continue with infinite. The second step, step number one, is finished and we have to pick the node with the smallest distance. In this case, it is X. We pass to step two. We add, let me uh, write a, a plus here in order to add X to the set. So the, the set now is U, W, X. We have to do the same process again. So we have, let's say, closed uh, node U, which is the source, node W, which is the result from uh, step zero, node X, which is the result from step one. So X, this is the, the final value. And we continue. Okay. Uh, now, again, this column is not closed yet, so node V. Is it possible to reach V from U with a shorter path, which a minimum path compared to the previous one we have with a cost 6? Yes or no? Okay, uh, if we use this one, we have a cost of 6. 3 plus 3 equals 6. So there are no other possibilities because if we use x and this one, it is uh, bigger. So there are no other possibilities. So finally, we remain this uh, node v as 6 predecessor w. Then, uh, node y. Is there any shorter path compared to the one we have with a cost 11 by pivoting on uh, X or W? Yes, the one from W, it's also considered, but in this case, five plus seven is 12, so it's bigger than, than 11. In this case, uh, we are in the same situation than in the previous node, so we finally leave as it is. 11 W and can we reach node set by means of W no X yes in this case we can use this link 5 plus 9 is equal to 14 and the predecessor is X Then, uh, the next node we are going to introduce into the set n prime is v, because it has a cost 6 from, from the source node, which is, which is u. So we pass to next step. We have the source node. We have the w node, the first step, then X node, second step, and V node as the third step with a cost of 3 plus 3 equal to 6. Uh, next step is to decide which node between Y and Z is the one to be included in the shortest path 3. So uh, the idea is to, first of all, add v to to the set of n prime okay and then check y as a potential node 
is it possible to to reach y from u with a smaller path yes if we use this connection this link we will have 3 plus 3 plus 4 equal to 10 so we remove this information and we say that we can reach y with a cost of 10 with a predecessor v and finally uh, is it possible to reach z yes by means of x so the same cost the same predecessor. The next node to be included is y step 4 plus y and finally we are able to reach z by means of a sorted path which is yz with a cost 2 so the final cost here is 12 predecessor y. This final node is included in the last step plus z and we have the result. Uh, this is the shortest path 3, the one represented here using the red color uh, is the shortest path three from u to the rest of the node. So I can reach from u to x. I can go from u to x using this link with a cost of five. I can go from u to w using this link with a cost of three. I can go from u to v using this path with a cost of six and so on and so forth. So with information, I can have the resulting forwarding table of uh, the uh, the router u so the forwarding table of router u is this one if we consider traditional ip routing with two columns destination and next hub if the destination is x the link is u x if the destination is w the next hop is UW, so the, the direct link. If the destination is V, the next hop is again W. Uh, if the destination is Y and Z, the same next hop link UW, UW. So the only possibility of exiting from U by means of X is to reach that destination node. The other cases, this is the branch of the network topology. So this is the routing table of node U, which is the target of our algorithm. Here you have another example with another different topology, so I suggest you to, to, you, to do it. And you can also check another types of examples in the website. I give you a hint. This is the resulting sorted path three from you. So the idea is to assess the sorted path from you to the rest of the of the node in the network. And this is the forwarding table in you. And finally, uh, let me introduce a little bit of complexity for the algorithm. If we have an, a network with n nodes, in, on each iteration we have to check all the nodes that are not included in the set n prime. So we have to do this number of comparisons that in the normal case we have a complexity of O n up to 2 and by means of an efficient algorithm we can use we can have a, a lower complexity and multiply by the logarithm of n being n the number of nodes in the network uh, in, in the in the first slides i mentioned that we can use as metric in the routing different possibilities for example the number of hops the 
the traffic that is in the in the links, the link load, the congestion, the bandwidth, so different metrics. But oscillations can be possible. So imagine an example where the cost of each link is proportional, is the same that the traffic carried out by the link. So the traffic is always flowing through the link. Uh, there can be oscillations. What's the meaning of oscillations? So imagine that this uh, topology, the one depicted here, wants to send traffic to node A. The rest of the nodes want to send traffic to node A. Okay? So node C will send uh, information, an amount of information E to A, this is the destination. Node D will send one and node B will send one. So a potential routing configuration could be this one. From C to B to A and from D to A. Okay? If we consider that the link cost is equal to the traffic, if the routing algorithm is run again, we can see that, for example, the flow will be using this path because there is more traffic on the other part of the network. If we send the traffic using this configuration, the rest of the network is not uh, highly used. So if there is another execution of the routing algorithm, the information can change. So there are oscillations depending on the time slot we run the algorithm. So which are possible solutions for for this situation, what can we do to avoid such oscillations? Okay, one solution could be to not use the link load as the same as the link cost. Okay, but you know uh, we have to to handle the routing depending on the traffic uh, that is in the network. So if it is dynamic, we have to be prepared. So we can use this this uh, metric the link load, but it's a matter of synchronization. It depends on the time the each router has the information from the network. Okay, so uh, this solution could be the, the most reasonable one because although the routers could run the algorithm with the same periodicity, the instance for the algorithm execution couldn't be the same in, in each of the nodes. So it's interesting to see that even the algorithm is run with the same period but at different times, the instance of the execution will be synchronized on the routers and remain synchronized. So it, it doesn't matter the specific time that the algorithm is run on each of the routers because they all have the same information. Okay, so that's all for today. See you in the next video.